Now let's go ahead and take a moment and put together all of the steps of hypothesis testing when we are using the simple linear regression analysis technique. So the first thing that we're looking at is data type. So the data type that we are using is going to be numerical by numerical. The variables that we are measuring on our subjects are two pieces of numerical data, and that's how we are using it in our linear regression. So our population is still like the, the subjects that we're measuring, wherever that sample came from, that's going to be our population that we're interested in. And the parameter that we are interested in is beta 1. That's the parameter that we're interested in, that's what we're going to go on and uh, and wind up estimating. The assumptions that we go through are all the assumptions that deal with our uh, residual plots. So when we do these residual checks, remember there were five specific parts that we were doing, and those residual checks boiled down to we were checking for linearity, we were checking for normality, constant variance, uh, we were looking for independence, and centered about zero. Okay, so those were the checks that, that we were supposed to do. Next for our hypothesis, the null hypothesis that we set up is that beta 1 equals 0. And for this one, we're, we'll just say that we'll set up beta 1 as being not equal to 0. A lot of times we wind up doing not equal to 0 or this two-tailed test in the linear regression. We can do one tail, and we'll go through how to do those uh, in our software videos. All right, so next we need to set up an alpha, and once again, kind of the default is alpha equals 0 0.05. Uh, we can set it higher or lower as the uh, occasion requires. So the testing method, when we get to this point, uh, really for us right now, there's only one method of simple linear regression, but we would want to do simple linear regression. And then we need to go ex do our experiment and collect our data. So when we did that, we'd then be able to do our plot, and we could suppose that our regression data collection and our experiment, we got data that looks like this, and we had some sort of model that comes out to be like this. Okay, so next when we get to our test statistic, uh, we actually have two possible test statistics uh, that we can use and that, that we can report. Uh, so one way that we can do it is we could report an F statistic. Just like we used when we were reporting uh, an ANOVA test. And we'll go into the nuts and bolts of that. Or we can also report a T statistic. And both of these will give you the same p-value. And we'll go over more in depth uh, the exact format of how we want to report uh, either our f-statistic or our t-statistic. Um, but our p-value is exactly the same. It's still like, given that the null hypothesis is true, what's the likelihood that we would see data this extreme or more extreme? Like That's just what our p-value is. If our p-value is less than our alpha, we then get to reject the null hypothesis. And then we're ready for our conclusion and kind of our post hocs. Okay, so if we have significant results, uh, we need to kind of bundle all of our ideas up together. And there's actually quite a lot that, that we need to do. Because if we remember, like one of the other things that, that we like to calculate is the coefficient of determination this r squared to help us know like 
what percent of the variability in the data was explained away by the model. Uh, and we also want to basically include in here some explanation of our slope, so we can include that like in our confidence interval part. And if we do get, if we do reject the null hypothesis and we need a confidence interval, right, the, our confidence interval is going to be our B1, which is our estimation of beta 1, plus or minus some margin of error. If we're doing two-tailed, if we're doing one, then it'd just be plus or minus that adjusted kind of margin of error. Okay, so from this point, where do we go? Let's start off by writing our, uh, our concluding sentence. Uh, so we can, we can write this as we have collected sufficient evidence and then we can put in our we'll put in our APA APA format on our report we'll go over this in another video uh, to reject the claim that there is no relationship between uh, our numerical variables and conclude, and we conclude there is a relationship. Okay, so this is basically just coming down to here. Now, if we had done a one-tail test, we could say that we conclude that there's a positive relationship or that there's a negative relationship, so we can go, go into a little bit more depth. Because we didn't have like a super specific example here, I'm kind of writing this in generalities. Okay, so now that we've got, got this, one other thing that we want to be able to include is we want to include um, our r squared. So we can say that uh, we accounted for accounted for, and then we can put this like r squared percent of the variability. in the model, or in the data, sorry, with the model. Okay, so we're able to get all, all through there. And then we finally need a confidence in interval. And we're going to kind of fold in the definition of our slope into this confidence interval because that is exactly what this guy is. This is the slope. So we can say that we are, so this would be, you know, our confidence level, confidence level percent confident. That for every one unit increase, increase in X there is a B1 now we could say like a B1 plus or minus the margin of error or there we could say that there is there is between whatever our confidence interval is there's a couple ways that, that we can actually get it written out uh, but let's say we'll do between between A, and then we could put lower bound to upper bound. In this case, we'll have an increase, but we could also have decrease, increase, slash decrease, 
in Y. So we basically have one new thing. We've got to include this coefficient of determination. And then we kind of tweak how we talk about our confidence interval to be able to make sure that we understand this interpretation of our slope. Uh, but this is basically the steps of how we do our hypothesis testing with simple linear regression. And we will do some examples with our software so that we can get specific values and then really get this into a specific format.